Oh, all right. Hey there, Pirate Crew, and welcome to our second video on base coating. So again, we're always going to start off with the why. Why is this important? Uh, base coating is very important because it allows us to get a very, very solid base, of course, of a specific color. Now, this leads into a whole other conversation that I wanted to touch on really quickly, which is that different types of paint in different types of pigment, meaning, you know, yellow, red, blue, green, you know, all the way through that color spectrum have different color strength. So I'm going to cut over to a quick infographic here. There's a scale of color strength. Now, blue is the strongest pigment, meaning that it's going to take the least amount of coats to get an effective base coat. Next up, of course, is purple. Purple has a lot of blue in it, generally, and that's also going to aid us in that coverage. Now, green, green is kind of between the two. It has blue in it, but it also has yellow in it. Now, yellow is the weakest color, but we're gonna talk more about that here in a second. Green, because it has a blue, still tends to cover very, very well, unless it's a neon green, a very, very light green. Uh, and yeah, I'll show you kind of a, a color here that might fit into that. Now, moving up the scale one more time, there's red. Now, red still covers very, very well. It's a primary color. And because of that, it has its own behaviors. Personally, I put it right in the middle of that color pigment uh, scale. Now, next on that line is orange. Orange does not cover very well. It covers a little bit better than yellow, but a little bit worse than red. Now, finally, we come to yellow. Yellow covers the worst. It doesn't matter what brand, it doesn't matter you know, where you get it, you're gonna always have a hard time getting a pure yellow base coat. And there are strategies and ways to work around that. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. So one of the ways that we can work around weak coverage is if we have a heavier base coat of white. White reflects all colors, and because of that, we can get a much better coverage with any color over white. Now, why would you want to use black on a miniature? You would want to use black on a miniature because it helps give us natural shadows. Now, for red through blue, I think it's a really, really great idea, kind of like how we were talking about in the priming video, to have a white base coat or a zenithal priming, so a highlighted priming on top of that black. And so if you're gonna paint something like very bright red armor or very bright yellow armor, I would say make sure that the majority of the priming that you do is with white or a very light gray. So now that we've talked about that, uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna head over, I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks on how to get an effective base coat. Oh, all right, Piter Crew. So welcome to this first part of basing where we are going to talk about, you know, kind of some paint consistency tricks and, uh, you know, some things to do to make sure that we are successful when we are trying to place an effective base coat. So over here on the palette where you can't see right now, I have blue, green, red, and yellow. We're going to use each of those. We were talking about uh, color strength, you know, earlier uh, in the introduction to the video, and we're going to go ahead and do base coats with all of those. So um, starting with just one color, because I really want to define how this is going to work. So um, over here, on my palette, I have paint that is right out of the box, and you can see it is very, very, very thick. Now, what we wanna do, as you guys probably already are assuming, is we want to thin it down just a touch. And now the reason we want to thin it down just a little bit is so that it preserves the details, where as if we painted right out of the bottle, it might kind of cake up after a little while and we might destroy the detail. So what we are not looking for and how you can kind of know if you've gone too far is if the paint gets too transparent. This is what I would consider to be too transparent over here on the left, right here in the center. That is excellent. That is exactly what we're looking for. Another way that you can test this out is if you have a piece of paper here, we're going to grab some of this paint that's too transparent. If we place it over, you can kind of see how we can see the lines right through. So here is the paint as it comes right out of the bottle. You can tell it's very, very, very thick. We can still kind of see these lines through. Remember we were talking about pigment strength. And then so here is what we are looking for for our 
base coat. You can tell it flows a little bit more easily and it's just a touch more transparent. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hop over to the palette and we're gonna go ahead and start to apply this red base coat. Now, what I am going to do is I'm just gonna paint a small stripe of it down the center here and uh, you guys are gonna kind of count with me how many coats it takes to get an effective base coat. So this is our first one, we're gonna use our hair dryer now. That is the first one and you wanna make sure that that layer is completely, completely dry before we place down our second one. And so again, we are already almost there. We're probably gonna get it on the third one. So here is our third one. And it's just gonna take one more. Okay, and then here is the fourth one. So if you guys noticed, as I clean my brush here, I just now clean my brush for the first time. When you're painting your base coats, I highly recommend that you use a larger size brush. This is a size two from Windsor & Newton, but just about any size two or three is gonna be very, very effective at holding enough paint for you to continue to do those multiple layers and apply the base coat. There's a couple of ways that we can tell if a base coat is successful. The first is that we can still see the texture of the base underneath, and the same goes for your models when you're applying a base coat is that you are going to be able to see all of that intricate detail still underneath and it's gonna be smooth as well. We want our base coats to be as smooth as possible. So this is really base coating in a nutshell. The only other thing that I wanna show you and we're gonna hop into a time lapse and I'm just gonna kind of count down the amount of layers that we're using here um, is we are going to do yellow on this side, we're gonna do green and then we're gonna do blue. So, uh, and the reasons are that I want to show you guys how the different strengths of those individual p pigments are. And now these are all from Privateer Press. These are all P3 paints. And I've picked them because they they are very, very cooperative. They're from the same line. So essentially the consistency of the pigment is gonna be very, very similar. So let's go ahead and hop into that. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys in just a few minutes on the other side. Right, Pyre Crew. So as you can see, we got all of those base coats on there. You could tell the yellow took quite a few coats. It was almost like three or four times the amount that it took to get the red down. Now, green only took three coats and blue only took two coats. So as you can see, some color, and of course, we're, we're painting all these base coats over black just to show you the strength. The easy way to overcome any difficulties with base coating is partially to have a little bit of white going on. With yellow, there's still gonna be some tips and tricks that you know, you're know you going to need to know how to use, and one of them is you know kind of utilizing browns along with yellows. In the Patreon video, we went over how to do that, so if you're interested, head over to Patreon and check out the how to paint yellow video, and it'll kind of give you some better tips and tricks on how to handle that, but you guys can tell you know, the, the difference in strength of the pigments. And it doesn't matter what brands you use, in all honesty, you're still going to kind of, in around 
the same way get um, this type of difference in coverage with your base coat. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this first video and I know that these first two topics have been very, very basic. Again, these are here for that reason. And yeah, again, if you guys have any questions, I want to hear them. Uh, if you guys have anything to add to the conversation, I want to hear that as well. Um, I would love to see you guys pictures uh, of base coated miniatures. You know, once you watch this video, if you picked up some new tips and tricks and uh, with all that being said, I wanted to thank you guys again for your support. If you want to support Pirate Monkey Painting, uh, you can do so with as little as a dollar over on Patreon. If you support with five bucks a month on Patreon, it gets you access to an archive of over 30 hours of tutorial content with more being added each and every month. And once again, I wanted to thank you guys for being the best painting crew on the seven seas. You guys have a fantastic day and happy painting. Bye.